Welcome back on the AM show. We're going to touch on legal matters for starters on the AM show as we get into our big stories. And it has to do with the office of the special prosecutor. Now, there has been that impeachment process that has now been quashed, uh, sent through by Martin Alamisi, Burns Kaiser, Amidu. But the question is, some of what some people like Ken Crunchy have pointed to in the past in respect of the powers of the OSP to arrest, detain, freeze assets or otherwise. Where do we stand on uh, that? Is the office itself living up to expectation? And if so, how do we fine tune what we now have as uh, the act enabling that institution to function? Is the special prosecutor being targeted as a person? Or is it right that we target the institution and fine tune it? What are some of the answers to some of these questions? We have joining the conversation our guests on uh, the show this morning. Bobby Banson is a lawyer. We also have uh, joining the conversation anti graft campaigner Edem Senanu. Gentlemen, good morning. Morning, sir. Uh, it's good to have you, Adam. Bobby, I can see that there's a bit of a technical hitch. We'll try to reconnect with you, and uh, then I can hear from you. Unless you can hear me, Bobby. <clears throat> Not yet, I think. All right. So, Adam, here we are. It's good to uh, connect with you one more time. Uh, and, yes, we are talking about the law dealing with graft and everything in between. But I would like to start off um, from the viewpoint of whether you think the office of the special prosecutor has lived up to expectation, whether the office has achieved enough since its inception. Martin Amidu, now Kisi Ajabe. Your th thoughts, your take. Well, absolutely. I think that the name office of the special prosecutor uh, sends shivers down the spine of quite a number of people. And it is the reason why the office is of so much interest by the political elite. Uh, and we find that various people are trying various mechanisms and strategies to try and pull down the office, uh, and, and much more so probably even the individual occupying the office because they see that these are independent, objective-minded people who are not going to broker to one side or the other when issues arise. Um, I think that for those of us in the anti-corruption space, we understand that what matters more is prevention rather than prosecution and trying to chase after sums of money that have been stolen. Not many people understand that perspective. Uh, it is not worth using more money to go running about after resources that have been lost. Often we don't we are not able to retrieve as much as we would have if we had prevented the crime in the first place, the fraud or the corruption. And so from a preventive heart, uh, and looking at about 11 cases, the current special prosecutors handed, handled since August uh, 2021, that's three years, uh, almost four major cases every year, uh, and very high level ones at that, um, just that the court processes have not been funded. Some have been, and some are on appeal, like the Sir John's case where they administratively froze his uh, assets in the Sakumono Ramsar site, as well as the Chimota Forest, and yet the court ruled against that, saying that it was posthumous, uh, which they have appealed against. So, from where I sit, I think that the OSP is serving a very important role as a deterrent, uh, and as probably being the one institution that has been proactive in ensuring that um, those who want to continue being greedy uh, cannot just feel comfortable about it. Let me bring in Bobby Banson, who joins us via phone. Uh, Bobby, I'm going to pose that same question to you. Uh, for starters, do you feel the office of the special prosecutor has lived up to the billing? And if you do, why? Well, I think the... Um, uh, the depending on who is looking at what the expectation was. I, for me, looking at when they were set up, the kind of resources that have been allocated to them, 
the both financial and human resources, the kind of political cooperation that they have received. I don't think they could have done better than what they are doing now. There's, you you don't think they could have done better? Is that what you just said? Yes, than what they are do or what they have done. There's of course room for improvement, and like with every institution, it takes time to build the structure. And so I I, I am very hopeful that over time they would live up to their billing, like you said. But as it stands now, I think they are pushing, they are doing their best. Because you see, for instance, there are times that they have even gone against the, the, the part office, the part in gap. And uh, I think it's something that is commendable. Without it, yeah, they are putting out what they, are, uh, what they have done. And you cannot be right, but at least they must Bobby, I'm, I'm, I'm missing you. I'm losing you. There are patches in the conversation. I'd, I'd beg you to just reposition yourself and, and okay. speak up a bit more. Go back okay. maybe just Is 20 it seconds. Yes, it, it, it's better. Okay, so I'm saying that with the environment that the OSP office finds itself in, I don't think they could have done better than what they are doing now. And I believe, like with every institution, it takes time to build structures. And so once we have the personnel there with the right environment, I believe that over time, the, the office would, would have the structures that we all want to see to be able to discharge their mandate under the Office of the uh, uh, Special Prosecutor Act. The question is, D4, Dabeng, when, when will that come? People are saying already, yes, it has had its own logistical constraints, the institution, the outfit. But we've also pumped many tens uh, of millions of our, uh, you know, money into that outfit. A lot of money has been pumped in there. You talk about human resource. We've also, uh, you know, diverted, if you like, some stalwarts in there. Even there was that tussle between, I believe, Customs and the Office of the Special Prosecutor over having someone seconded there. I'm not saying it's a perfect situation, but I'm saying quite a lot has been expended. Are you saying that juxtaposing what has been committed versus the returns? Adam Sinano was just mentioning, 11 cases. What has come of them? Those still in court, those um, that have been dealt with. Are we really getting the returns in the fight against corruption? And I'll pose that same question to Adam Sinano, but I'll start with you, Bobby. Well, I think we are seeing some effort which hitherto was not there. Mm. And, you know, you can't expect mm. returns where you have not sold. So you can't reap what you have not sold. And so if these are the sowing period for that office, with the experiences they will garner, uh, the legislative mm. framework, mm. the human resources, I believe that with time, we would all see the fruits that we are expecting. Uh, Adam, quick thoughts on that. When you juxtapose all of the resources committed versus what we've gained, what is your brief take, and then we'll go into other substantive matters. Well, truth be told, I mean, it's important to get the timing right. For the bulk of the period, the OSP has worked with less than 15 staff. It wasn't until the last quarter of last year that they, 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 they went above 100 or so. They now got the support, the financing, to now do uh, a substantive, uh, you know, recruitment. Uh, so it's less than one year since they got, uh, in that sense, a certain full complement of staff. And yet during that time, they have been at the forefront, more proactive than most of the other anti-graft agencies we have in this country, making sure that as issues came up, they took an interest. And the cases they've had that are handled are high profile. The cases may not have ended in terms of the court processes, but even in terms of the initial actions, these have... Uh, provided a very strong sense of direction, uh, uh, have provided a very strong sense of direction in terms of the position that the institution is taking on, on graft. So I think that uh, perhaps as Ghanaians, we, we are trying, we are in a haste to see results. I think that if we have, for example, a fast track court on anti corruption dedicated to that space, would have seen a lot more results um, by now. Uh, and I think that they are doing quite well considering the timing, the logistics, uh, and other resources that have provided. 
Are you surprised as an anti-graft campaigner? And of course, uh, the likes of Daniel Yao Domelevo have always said that if you fight corruption, corruption will fight back. And, and that with all of these pushes against the, the OSP, that is what is happening. Ken Crunchy was filing a writ at the Supreme Court, and then the petition for impeachment came through, and he withdrew. But now that it has been deemed unmeritorious by the Chief Justice, he is back in court, and he is stating his writ aims to, of course, have the apex court make a declaration that the OSP's powers, including arrest, detention, freezing of assets, and seizure, are abusive and unlawful. Are you surprised that we've created this office and a member of this party, the governing party, is uh, taking on the office of the special prosecutor? Your take entirely. I mean, we know that groups are not, um, they don't tend to be homogeneous. I mean, you tend to have heterogeneous uh, parties. And uh, there's some research that shows that you, you typically have people at the extremes. Uh, in fact, the data is worrying because it says that typically over time, those who are sober, the sober, more objective members of a party uh, give way to the extremists. And then after time, you know, those who probably want to do the right thing move out and leave the space for those who are more loud and, you know, uh, and so the patterns don't seem to give us a very positive trajectory. I'm not surprised at all. Um, I think that the, 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 the challenge for me is that we're in a political season and I don't want to people are very mindful about the perspective you live with the public because like 959 and there were office of special prosecutor for those of us in civil society, it's a very important thing. Uh, in spite of those who say, oh, the attorney general can play this role. Uh, and the, we spent a lot of time thinking through the overlaps and making sure that what we had learned from the lessons of the past in deriving and being like 959 to support the office of the special prosecutor. We, yet we have found some gaps that we like to fill, including looking at lifestyle audits. Uh, I think that whoever does this, is going against civil society's perspective of this. You are sure to have the majority of us saying that nah, this is not in the best interest of Ghana because we know it is not in the best interest of Ghana. In other words, you are not supportive of this writ? Absolutely not. Uh, Bobby, your take on this, any surprises in there? And, and after this impeachment for Ken Crunchy to go back to the Apex Court, uh, what signals do you read? Well, um, the, the writ is not attacking the person of the OS or the SP as his pet. I mean, he's seeking constitutional impeachment of some of the issues of the OS Act. These are Bobby, you are making important points. I would have you move again just a little bit so we can. It's unfortunate <laughs> that it's, it's, it's still patchy. Hello, can you hear me? Better. Just, just speak up for me so that even if it gets okay. patchy. We can okay. Hear you. I'm saying that Ms. you ask the, the, what happens or what do I see after the impeachment and the suit in court. And I'm saying that it's, for me it's important to note that the writ that has been filed in court by Mr. Kante is not attacking the person uh, of the social... Is the office. Yes. He's seeking constitutional uh, interpretation of some constitutional issues that some of the things of the uh, going back for, for a consideration of whether or they are they undermine the post. If you look at the rate he's speaking, rating from the powers of the French, the powers, the atomic data, and if it is the people of the audit, I think they are very interested in this. I do not they have lost this. Uh, I believe that have a big those interpretations. I always think that it's put and it's solely promote the... But Bobby, Bobby, it's, it's, yes. it's, it's really difficult hearing you. So we're going to try to reconnect with you and, and see. I don't know whether we could try the Zoom option again because it always sounds better than uh, this connection. You are making very important points. Unfortunately, uh, we can't hear it. But just, just bear with us. We'll try to reconnect uh, with you. You look at the, the red and it, the plaintiff is suing... Uh, for the following reliefs. A declaration that the Office of the Special Prosecutor Act, that is 2017, Act 957, 
uh, is contrary to articles 11, 17, 1, 2, and 3, 88, 3, and it goes on and on. A declaration that the combined effects of articles 2901F and 2902 uh, to 6, and then 93, 2, and 107B of the 1992 Constitution, Section 2 of the Office of the Special Prosecutor Act, has amended Article 88 of the 1992 Constitution and therefore is contrary to Articles 11 1B of the 1992 Constitution. It goes on and on. Basically, the thrust of uh, the petition or the writ being that some portions of the Act contravene or go against other portions of the Constitution. And we know how, uh, what, what happens. The Apex Court would then have to determine whether this is indeed the truth or the facts of the matter. And uh, if, if it does go against the Constitution, then there would have to be a decision on striking it down or what the way forward would be. We'll leave that to the judges uh, to do. But, Adam, so now that we've got to this point, what are your expectations moving forward? I'm sure you are expecting that the impeachment um, request for the OSP would be turned down. That has been turned down. No prima facie case uh, determined. But what would be your expectations moving forward from the Apex Court? Technical and nuanced, um, you know, petition. Um, and because one is not a lawyer, not too sure how it will, it will pan out. Fact is, um, these powers we crafted into the law of arrest and detention, etc., were purposefully put there within the context of what we had seen other anti-graft agencies attempt to do uh, and where they had gaps that didn't make them effective or efficient. Uh, and so the thinking was these things were necessary in order that they could function and deliver on the interests uh, and aspirations of citizens. Uh, it will be an unfortunate situation where technicalities uh, result in a situation where the OSP is made ineffective and inefficient because we are not able to, as it were, allow the inculcation of some of these very important powers uh, for the office to, to be effective in arresting and picking up people. I am hoping that uh, we'll have progressive interpretation of the law and that ultimately the office would rather be strengthened rather than us go down a route that might, uh, you know, undermine what we set out to do in the first instance. Let me, thank you, Adam, hold for me. Let me bring back Bobby Banson. Let's try this one more time. Bobby, if you can hear me, your thoughts on the, the previous question. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. So my point was that the, the writ that has been filed is seeking some very interesting relief. And I think the Supreme Court, once they confirm that uh, they have the jurisdiction to entertain that writ, which I think they would, then we would want to see how they would look at it, particularly in respect of the authority that the Constitution has given to the Auditor General and the Attorney General, and how the OSP Act is seeking to give some of these powers to the office of the OS. And so it would be an interesting situation. You want to see how the Supreme Court would, would come out with their decision. Right. Uh, looking at all of these petitions that keep coming up, do you feel in some way that the institution itself is under some sort of attack, under fire? I think attack or under fire may be a strong word. But like we always say, if you want to fight corruption, corruption will fight back. <laughs> so let us see that in one breath, somebody may say that maybe that people that may think may be the subject of the work of the office may be fighting back. You can also have a second look at it and say that let's, Ghanaians generally want to test the law. So let's go and test the law for what it is worth, not because of any malicious intention. So you can look at it from both angles. But fortunately, we have a law that has been passed until it is repealed. The OSP can exercise all the authorities under that law, and then to ensure that his work is not truncated or curtailed pending the determination of these matters. 
Mm. Bobby, hold for me. I, I know you're pretty busy, but just hold for me. We'll be capping off shortly. Let me bring in Amanda Clinton, also a lawyer. Amanda, good morning. Amanda, if you can hear me, please say something. All right, uh, we don't have Amanda Clinton, so we're going to cap off the conversation then. Gentlemen, what then are you looking forward to as far as this uh, petition, this latest writ, uh, writ by Ken Crunchy uh, is concerned? What would be your expectations? Of course, I know the matter is in court, but Bobby, you can walk us through the processes. You've already spoken about whether the court will uh, deem that it has jurisdiction and you feel it will, but what then legally can we expect? And Adam, out from the anti graft perspective, what would be your expectations? I'll start with you, Bobby, quickly. Well, per the rules of the Supreme Court, once the writ is filed, the um, defendants must file their statement of case in response, setting out the legal authorities they are relying on, responding to the factual and legal matters. If they have any evidence in support, they are required to attach, after which the parties must file what is called a joint memoranda of issues that the Supreme Court will determine. Um, if they are not able to agree on the issues, the Supreme Court would set down the issues, and then they will be asked if they want to make any additional legal agreement. Then a date will be set for, for, for a decision to be rendered. So looking at the timeline, I'll be surprised if a decision is rendered before the end of the year. All right. Well, Vincent, we're grateful for your time. Uh, let you me today. bring in Adem Senanu. Adem, final thoughts? Yeah. So I would, I mean, my view, what's important is to take into consideration the historical antecedents, how far this country has come, uh, the level of corruptions that, as it were, triggered the need for this kind of a law. Uh, the context is very important. Uh, the aspirations of the people of Ghana in terms of this space, uh, the fact that corruption is a very, has a very crippling effect on our country and its economy, and take a very progressive look at it. Uh, assuming that there are any overlaps that they think must be dealt with, let's keep the best interests of this country at heart. Let's have a progressive inquisitorial approach and ensure that at the end of the day, we do not cripple nor undermine that which we set out to do as people and citizens of this country. Adam Senanu, uh, grateful for your time. Bobby Vanson, a lawyer, Adam Senanu, an anti graft campaigner. But I'm going to cap off the conversation with another lawyer, Amanda Clinton. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, what do you make of this latest move by Ken Crunchy to sort of lampoon, if you like, uh, the office of the special prosecutor? He had um, a motion, a writ, before the impeachment process was triggered by Martin Amidou and he withdrew it. But now on the back of that impe impeachment being deemed unmeritorious by the Chief Justice on the basis of a prima facie case being established, now he is back in court. And I'm sure you follow the processes. What do you make of it? Well, I think it's a great attack on the rule of law. You, you, um, you think it is what? It's a great attack on the rule of law, right. basically. Yeah. Because, you know, we always look at precedents where this has happened before. And I think it recently happened in Slovakia in March 2024. Just this year, they dismantled the special prosecution office on the basis that the OSP had gone after some close allies of the president. Um, and so they basically just rejigged the criminal code and dismantled it so that all cases would be absorbed by the um, um, the equivalent of the AG's department. So basically, what this case does is basically say that it's unlawful and abusive in terms of the OSP Act, as well as the fact that all prosecutory powers would go back to the AG. Um, and they're basically saying that if it's contrary to the Constitution, um, in terms of contrary to the protection of privacy, of property, the respect of human dignity, fair trial, and um, it means that money is not a true fund, it's, it's elsewhere. And so they want to absorb all of that 
And so they're basically attacking the seizure powers and um, the power to search, as well as um, the power to request for information, etc. So the office is disbanded. They might be able to get away with this in terms of constitutionally. What they're relying on is entrenched provisions of the constitution, the executive, etc. So on paper, it's good. But otherwise, I would say that it's an attack on the rule of law, basically. It's an attack on the rule of law. But it, are you concerned about some of the points made? He mentions a plethora of articles in the OSP Act that he thinks contravene, go against the 1992 constitution, which is our, our grand norm, our overarching law. Uh, what do you make of that? Because in essence, the 1992 constitution is above all in every way. Uh, so in, in that regard, how would you contemplate this writ? Well, yes, I mean, he's, he's looking at things like um, the, the power to police. There is only one um, division. No person or other entity can police apart from the police. And they've been given, you know, um, the OSB has been given these sort of special powers, as well as the Attorney General's role to prosecute criminal cases. It's entrenched in the, in the Constitution. And then... Um, you know, the OSP has these rights. So they're basically saying any provision that is entrenched uh, by the Constitution cannot, uh, you can't make new laws. And so they would like to go back and undo that. But I just think the timing is very interesting. On the day that it was declared, declared that the special prosecutor, um, you know, there was no merit to Amidu's um, petition, more or less on the same day, you know, we've got this thing refiled uh, for the whole office to be disbanded. And I just think, I don't really believe in coincidences very much. And I think it would be very sad if the office was dismantled because it, it must mean that they're doing serious work and people are going after them in order to, to reassign those cases in effect, basically. You say you will be... I mean, grieved uh, if, if the office is dismantled. Um, is this corruption fighting back then, as has been touted? And, and does that mean the office is actually doing its work? If you look at the number of cases, uh, there's precious little, if anything at all, to show. Uh, we've pumped in a lot of millions. We've pumped in human resource. Uh, what is there to show, basically? So do you feel with these cases, this railing against the office, it is corruption fighting against the work of that institution. What, what we, as civil society and, and, and different actors in society have got to back the OSP on this. Because, for instance, in South America, you know, they're massive, they've got a massive um, drive to go against drugs and cartels, etc. And it was only with, you know, civil society backing them and the people backing them and 24-hour police security for them and their family in terms of the OSP over there, that they are able to do even just a fraction of their work. And I think we do have to back the OSP because under Amidu's tenure, it wasn't his fault. You know, the office was still getting on its legs. And then under the deputy's tenure, he was just about to kick start. And then, you know, he made a complaint that a lot of the cases um, at the court it didn't seem that they were being allowed to earmark funds, confiscate things, et cetera, et cetera, which was frustrating his role. So I think, yes, given the opportunity, um, you know, there'll be just as strong as uh, special prosecutor's offices in America and South America if they're being given teeth. But I think it would be a very bad precedent um, for the government in a way to sort of use it back door and to stand on this um, constitutional pro provisions to dismantle them and absorb them and then mention the consolidation fund whilst they're doing it. When in fact, it means that, you know, the OSP is probably doing their job and, and, and that's why people aren't very happy. Amanda, thank you for what you've added to this conversation. We're very grateful that you took the time uh, to join us. And that is Amanda Clinton, a lawyer. Well, the verdict is out there.